Hi, I'm going to show you the next steps to proceed and use the same tools and procedures like software developers do. Now for the data scientists. Hi, I'm Sasha. Welcome to the fourth part of this five part series. In the first parts, I was showing how to use Azure DevOps as a DevOps pipeline for machine learning. We used various tasks in a pipeline to check data quality, connect Azure DevOps to Azure Machine Learning Services and train and register the model. If you missed those videos, please check the description. I put there a link for the whole series and you can start with the first video. And if you are new to this channel and want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing topics, then don't hesitate. Subscribe now and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. I am back in Azure DevOps. Let me recap what we did during the last videos. So I created a repo with all the relevant files. So for training, running some tests, set up a local testing environment for, for the first data quality tests. And I also have a deployment folder in here, which we are going to use now to deploy that to an Azure container instance. I also created a build pipeline, which in the end generated a model, uploaded that model into the model repository, which is in the workspace. If I look into models, I can see that here is my uploaded model version one. And my task for today is I want to create now a release pipeline to deploy to pre-production and in a later video, deploy that to production. To be able to do that, I'm again creating a new pipeline, in this case, a release pipeline. I want to start with a complete empty environment. And once again, I've got different stages, in my case, a stage for pre-production and later on for production. In that stage, I can add jobs. And these jobs again have tasks and I've got an artifact section to pick up from an existing build job with the artifacts. And exactly that's what I'm going to do now. So I reference a build, in this case, from my current project, from that pipeline. And I want to have the latest build and I can give her the resource and alias. I'll stick with the default and add that. Up next, I'm going to build the first stage. In this case, I want to deploy to pre-production. So that's my first stage and I want to define my first job. This looks pretty much like the jobs we used already for the build pipelines. And again, I've got a job agent. I want to switch that again to an Ubuntu load set. I can reference which artifacts I want to use. In this case, these are completely fine. And since I'm building a complete new pipeline, I also have to do some basic work like specifying the Python version. Once again, Python version 3.6. So after I specified the Python version, I want to install the Azure CLI extension if it doesn't exist. So I'm just adding that as an inline script and call that Azure, um, add Azure ML CLI extension. And the last step is again, just an Azure CLI step and using an inline script. And in that script, I'm just use everything I have so far and deploy the model as a service. In my case, I'm calling model deploy. If I, of course, I have to again specify the resource group and the works, workspace name. I have to specify a name for that service. Therefore, I have to introduce some new variables, which I'm going to do in a second. Then use the outcome of the previous step, in this case, the model JSON, to use the correct registered model. And then the deployment target, I have to specify in a YAML file. And I did that with an ACI deployment config, which I'm going to show you in a second. Then the configuration for the inference, again, which I'm going to show you in a second. And if the service already exists, I want to overwrite that service. I also have to specify a working directory where all those files are in. Use the drop folder and use the deployment folder where all those files are in. So that's my, my working directory. Again, I have to give that thing a name. So again, I have to specify a name for that new service endpoint. And in here I can specify again variables. And I specify a variable for that service name and call it diabetes service 
minus Azure Container Instance, scope is for the release pipeline. Yeah, that should be it. I can also trigger that pipeline to be run automatically. When I'm going to do that, I could, for example, specify exactly at which point in time automatically that will be triggered. Another option is doing a continuous deployment trigger. And for example, say, okay, if a new build is available, automatically create a release and deploy that to pre-production in the end. And I'm going to do that. And I can save that as a new release pipeline. So after I set everything up, since this is currently not automatically triggered, I don't want to run a build process again. So I create a manual release pick a pipeline and based on the latest version, which I created through the last build and click on create release. I can go directly to the newly created release and see what's happening. It's then manually triggered, it downloaded that artifact and the deploy to pre-production has been queued. And I'm going to pause the video and come back as soon as this release has been generated. And I'm back. And as you can see, my first try to create a release failed for an easy reason. I just forgot to add the variables for the resource group and the workspace. After I did that, the upcoming two releases succeeded. So let's have a look in the latest one. So Python has been set, the Azure ML CLI extension had been installed and the service has been deployed. And as you can see, this is the URI where you could access the service. I just put that into my browser window. It says, yeah, error, there is no data in. So just because of the missing values to send against that API. So what I would like to add is now some kind of integration tests. So let me go back to that pipeline. By the way, I also renamed that pipeline to give it a meaningful name. And I want to edit that existing pipeline, go to the deploy to production stage and add some further tasks. So I set up already the Python environment, the ML extension and the deployment. So to be able to use PyTest again, I should add a bash task. And in that bash task, I'm going to select my setup script, which is already in the drop folder on setup. Here's my script install requirements shell. Since this is again using relative path, I have to select that setup folder as working directory. And of course, give that task a useful name. And now I'm able to do the integration tests. So I'm going to add another bash task. And in that bash task, I'm going to use an inline script. And let's go quickly through that script. I'm using PyTest with the integration underscore test Py. I'm again exporting everything to be able to integrate those tests into the pipeline. So I'm exporting all those information. But this time I'm also specifying a score URL, which is currently populated out of that statement. So let me quickly move to my terminal. So let's execute that command in the command line. And let's have a look first. So Azure machine learning service show, then the resource group, and I filled out already the variable for the resource group, then the same thing for the workspace and the name of the service, in my case, diabetes service Azure container instance. And I'm interested in the score URI. So let's add that to the query. And I get back the URL I'm looking for, but still in quotes. So let's execute the same command with the output of table separated value to just get the URL back. And looking back into Azure DevOps, I just saw that this is a completely wrong type. So let's remove that for a second. And of course I need an Azure CLI command. Why? Yeah, because I'm using that sub command. So again, switching to inline script, pasting the command, and here we go. Now we are executing that Azure ML command exactly in the right context. That's fine. That delivers me the URL back and I'm transferring that as a parameter to that Python script. One thing I need to do as well is again, switching the working directory in this case to my integration tests directory. And you can see there are two files in there and we are going to have a deeper look into that space in a second. 
Let's also give that task a useful name. So in my case, run integration tests. And last but not least, I want to publish the test results. And again, just using JUnit, the path is completely fine. That looks fine as well. What I want to set is also the exact test title, so integration test staging, as well as giving the task a useful name. That looks good as well. And then I should be all set with my pipeline. So let's save that and create a new release. And I'm going to again pause that video and have a look at the release as soon as this is done. And the release completed successfully. So let's have a quick look. So everything worked fine. Let's especially have a look at the tests. And in the tests you see the integration test script has been running. It generated an output file and run successfully in around about half a second. And the test results have been published. So when I look at the release, test results 100% passed. That looks fine as well. And I promised you to have also a look at the tests itself. So tests, integration. And you see I've got two files. One is the configuration which contains the definition that I want to pass either a score URL or optionally a score key, which we are going to use in the production deployment. And having a look at the file itself, it just uses the requests library to just send a post request to that endpoint. And I get that endpoint from the score URL, send a post request in the format of JSON and checking just that the request response is okay. and yeah, in that case, I don't test really the results itself, but uh, that's something you could, for example, add in a different test. So you nearly made it to the end of this five part series. In this video and the previous ones, we saw the whole pipeline, setting up Azure DevOps, checking data quality, connecting it to Azure machine learning services, train the model there, and now deploy an API with the help of Azure container instances and tested it. And in the next video, the last one, we are finally doing the final step, deploy the service to production and monitor it. So stay tuned. I'm also interested in your opinion. So please give me some feedback in the comment section about this series. I'm really curious about that. And if you've got suggestions for new videos, for new topics I could cover on that channel, please do me a favor. Also use that comment section and give me more insights. So see you soon.